believe it or not, there are actually more ways to use direction and speed with your objects and instances in Game Maker. Inside here, I've got an object player and an uh, object bullet again, and a room for them to play in. And quite simply, if I go into the player here, in a step event, so that's happening all the time, I've just got this little piece here for move with mouse and shoot. So once again, I'm bringing back a point direction, which is calculating a direction between the center of my player, my X and Y, to the center of the mouse, X and Y, and storing that direction, which is an angle, into mouse dir. And then I'm going to make my image angle, which is the angle of the actual sprite, equal mouse dir. This will make it so that this red line always points at the mouse. And then I'm using it in here. But we're going to look at this one first. If mouse check pressed button, or if mouse check button pressed, MB right, then I'm creating a bullet. Right from the center of my object, I'm just going to create a bullet. That's really nothing fancy, it just makes it so I'm allowed to shoot. And down here I've got if mouse check button MB left. But we're going to start here with motion set. There's also motion add, but we'll get into that in a sec. So if mouse check button, mouse button left, this means if I'm holding it, because I'm not checking press or release, so if I'm holding down the left button, motion set. This is the function we're looking at. It needs a direction and a speed. The direction will be mouse direction, which is the way I'm facing, and I'll move two as a speed. That's similar to two pixels every step. So let's just hop into the game and I'll show you what it does. So we start here with our room and I'm displaying my speed above my player, which is zero. As you can see, yep, my image angle follows the mouse. But if I hold down the mouse, the left button of the mouse, look at that. Unfortunately, with motion set and motion add, you're not taking away speed, so even though I've released the mouse button, I still float in that direction because I'm applying the speed of 2 at the direction of the mouse. I've actually done the same thing to the bullet, I just kind of put the same code in. Whenever I press the right button on the mouse, I shoot a bullet. Like that. And it just goes towards the mouse at a constant speed. Let me show you what that bullet code looks like. So here's my bullet object, and it's actually all done in the create event. See inside, once again, I'm just getting the direction, the angle from the center of the bullet, this time it's the bullet because it's in the bullet code block here, to the center of the mouse again, storing it once again in a variable called mouse direction, and there we go, mouse set, or sorry, motion set, which needs a direction and a speed, so it's going to go toward the mouse at the time of creation and move at a constant speed of 8 pixels per step. See, because motion set sets the motion of an object, I don't need to put it in the step event. It will happen all the time anyway. You are just saying, move at that speed. And now that instance memorizes the speed of 8 and enacts on that speed. This is pretty interesting here. This is outside room destroy. I do this a lot. In the other event, you may remember this from the events video, there's an outside room event, and all I'm doing is destroying the instance. I'm doing that so as I shoot bullets off into the distance, they don't go off infinitely and then clutter up the memory of the computer. They'll delete themselves, they'll destroy themselves. Now if you remember, there was another little thing here called motion add. Now, motion add, unlike motion set, sounds like what it is. Instead of setting an exact speed, like 2, it will add a number to the current speed. So let's see how this is different. If you remember, my speed was always 2, and I moved toward the last position wherever my mouse was when I was holding the mouse button down. The left button, to be precise. This time, it'll add 1 as long as I'm holding down the mouse button and it just goes crazy. <laughs> so there we go, I keep adding one. Now you're wondering, well if you're adding one, how are you getting these decimals? 
Well, that's because when I start going at angles and different speed, like... Say I'm going straight up and down. There, going straight down. But then now I go at an angle. Well, that's a 45 degree angle. The speed for that isn't going to be a flat number anymore. That's going to be a decimal number. So that's how I'm getting these decimals, even though I'm only applying one. But you see I can go one way, and then the other way. It's like doing acceleration and deceleration. And I can even kind of orbit myself around the mouse. But there we go, that's another way to use speed and direction to manipulate instances in your game. One way this would be cool is with a collision. Say my player collided with another object, and then when it did, it passed this direction and this speed onto that object. It would kind of be like a game of pool, where one ball hits another ball and transfers its inertia and velocity onto the second object. But we'll get into that when we get into other move functions and other collision functions. 